If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread this problem before listening on. In the first few parts of this question, we are going to be dealing with destructive interference. So that's what we want to talk about first. So we'll come down here and we will remind ourselves that when you have destructive interference, then phi, which is the phase difference, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but the phase difference must be an odd multiple of pi. So mathematically, we can translate that statement into the following equation. We have the phase difference equals an odd multiple, so 2m plus 1 multiplied by pi, where m is an integer from 0, 1, 2, and so on. Now, we need to talk more about that phase difference phi. The phase difference is given by this equation here, where we have the so-called path length difference divided by the wavelength of the sound source times 2 pi. Let us talk about that delta L, the path length difference. If we look at the diagram, we can see that the distance from the lower speaker to the listener is symbolized by D2, but we're going to actually call that L2. So L2 is going to be equivalent to D2. And then we have this other speaker, and we need to figure out an expression for the distance from that speaker to the listener. Now, what I just drew there was intended to be a straight line, and by connecting some lines, we can see we have a right triangle. And the two legs are symbolized by D2 and D1, but we want that distance from the upper speaker to the listener. We're going to call that distance L1. And so we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem. We would know that L1 squared, so that's the hypotenuse squared, is equal to D1 squared plus D2 squared. And if we square root both sides of that equation, we would get that L1 is equal to the square root of D1 squared plus D2 squared. So now that we have an expression for L1, and now that we also have that expression for L2, we can come over to our phase difference equation, and we can rewrite the delta L. We're just basically going to subtract the longer distance, which is L1, by the shorter distance, which is L2. So you could write this as L1 minus L2, but instead we're going to use the expressions we just generated for L1 and L2. So again, for L1, we have that square root term that we derived from the Pythagorean theorem. That's your L1, and then you subtract your L2, which we noted was D2, and then we'll finish writing the equation. So now we have the equation for the phase difference right here, but we also had this equation for the phase difference here. We're going to set those two equal to one another because they're both equal to the phase difference. And there we go. And now we can actually simplify just a little bit. If we divide both sides of the equation by pi, we can actually cancel the pi's on each side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce frequency into this equation. Now we may know that the speed of sound is equal to the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. So if you divide both sides of that equation by the wavelength, excuse me, if you divide both sides of that equation by the frequency, you would have the speed divided by the frequency is equal to the wavelength. So we're going to take this expression for wavelength and we're going to plug it in to the equation that we've been developing. Now what we're going to do is kind of simplify this a little bit. We're going to multiply the denominator by the frequency as well as the numerator. That way we can cancel the frequencies and kind of get rid of this complex fraction. So now we would just have V on the bottom. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by V so that we can cancel out the V on the left-hand side. We then have this little 2 here. That was earlier in the equation. We want to just get rid of that 2, so divide both sides of the equation by that 2. That way you can cancel the 2 on the left side. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this term containing all these d's. So let's go ahead and do that. On the left-hand side, that term will cancel out nice and straightforwardly. The other side is a bit ugly, so maybe instead of dividing by that ugly term, we can actually multiply by 1 over the ugly term. And that way we have two fractions being multiplied on this side, so we're going to multiply the numerators together and then multiply the denominators together. And there we go. Now we have our simplified expression for the frequency. It involves that m term, and let us not forget, whoopsies, that m can be any one of the following values. So in part a, we wanted, let's see, 
we wanted a lowest possible frequency. Uh, and then in part B and C, we're gonna want the second lowest and the third lowest. So if we wanna start with part A and get the lowest possible frequency, we can see that frequency is proportional to this 2M plus one term right here. So to make the frequency as low as possible, we would wanna make M as low as possible. And therefore we're going to first allow M to equal zero. So let's go ahead and plug zero in for M for part A. Now V would be the speed of sound and that is taken to be approximately 343 meters per second. And then the values of D1 and D2 are given in the problem. So we can plug those in as well. So everything's plugged in. When we simplify this, we're going to get a frequency of 343 Hertz. So that is the correct answer to part A. For parts B and C, we want the second and third lowest respectively. So we'll plug in M equals one and then M equals two for those two parts of the question. So in part B, when we plug one in for M, we should get 1029 Hertz. And then in part C, when we plug two in for M, we should get 1715 Hertz. Those are the frequencies, but the question asks by what must we multiply the frequency by from part A? So if we go to part B, we got 1029. You can actually take 1029 and divide by 343, and you would find that you would have to multiply by three. So in other words, 1029 Hertz is three times bigger than 343 Hertz. And then perhaps we could therefore say that the factor is three. On the other hand, for part C, 1715 Hertz, if you divide that by 343 Hertz, you get five. So for part C, the factor is Five. So that takes care of the answers for A, B, and C. In the next few parts of the question, we're dealing with constructive interference because look, in part D, it says the lowest frequency that gives a maximum signal. A maximum signal would be constructive interference as indicated in the parenthetical remark right there. So we're going to basically proceed in the very similar way except for constructive interference. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So for constructive interference, we have the phase difference equaling this term right here, where M is the same set of integers as it was for destructive. And then remember the phase difference expression that we had developed would still be applicable because we haven't changed any of those distances or the arrangement of the speaker. So we're gonna set these two equal to one another. And then we'll scoot down the page. We're gonna do some similar algebraic maneuvering. We can divide both sides by two pi. So this time the two pi's completely cancel out. We can sub in for the wavelength like we did earlier. Recall that the speed of the wave was wavelength multiplied by frequency. So if we divide both sides by frequency, we can make that substitution for the wavelength. Then we multiply the bottom and the top by the frequency. Maybe put this in brackets right off the bat. That way the frequencies cancel on the bottom of this complex fraction. And then we will multiply both sides by V to cancel it out on the left-hand side. And then finally we'll divide by that bracketed term. And now we just have to plug in particular values for M. We don't want to use zero for M, even though we're looking for the minimum frequency in part D. If we put zero in for M, then the frequency becomes zero, so there'd be no sound whatsoever. So instead of using zero for the minimum frequency, we're gonna plug in one. And if we simplify that, then the answer to part D becomes 686 hertz. And then for part E, we'll plug in two for M. And then for part F, we will plug in three for M. So let's go ahead and set those up. And when we simplify these, we get 1,372 Hertz for part E. For part F, it turns out to be 2,058 Hertz. But again, we want the factor by which we multiplied the answer from part D. In part D, we had 686 Hertz. So we take 1,372, divide by 686, and we would get to two. So for part E, the final answer is that the factor is two. And then for part F, we take our answer of 2,058, divide that by 686, and you would get a factor of three. So the correct answer to part F is that the factor is three.